going to present some important spiritual truths regarding the world condition right now. Even though this presentation was inspired by the coronavirus pandemic, the truths are valid in every material challenge that we'll ever face. Most people in the world, especially the, rest, the Western world, are in shock right now. They never thought that this kind of thing could happen to them. The unemployment, the shutdowns, the face masks, the lines to get into the grocery store, and then when you get in, there are so many empty shelves. It's the same as the prospect of death. Hardly anyone is thinking it's going to happen to them. But the truth is, everyone is going to leave the body. It's a reality check. It's a time for prayer. It's a time for introspection. And it's the time for the reawakening of the spiritual truths that will bring solace to the hearts of suffering humanity. These truths will answer the questions that lie at the core of the heart of every thoughtful person. Why am I suffering? Where do I go at the time of death? What's the purpose of life? And how do I become eternally happy? God is giving us a great opportunity to bring our awareness back to him for shelter. There's nothing of this material world that's giving us any substance to hold on to. I was asked if it was okay to approach God to relieve our suffering. It's always okay to approach God. It's like a child approaching the parents for basic needs and to relieve suffering, although it's understood that in a healthy parent-child relationship, the parents will fulfill the basic needs and give shelter to the children. It's the same for God. He naturally fulfills our needs and gives us shelter. But if a child approaches the parent for shelter and at the same time is causing distress to the other siblings, the parents are not very pleased. So in the same way, God, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the seed-giving father of all living entities, the humans, the animals, the birds, the fish, the insects, and he loves all of us equally. So if we're approaching Krishna, the Godhead, for shelter, and at the same time, we're causing distress to our other siblings, even to the point of slaughtering them and eating them. It's not very pleasing to the father. It's not very good. As every state and country have laws, there are also the laws of God and nature. If we break the laws of the state, there is punishment. But most people are in ignorance of the laws of God. That ignorance does not excuse them from the reactions to breaking those laws, however. Violation of nature's laws, of God's laws, brings so much suffering, floods, droughts, famines, um, even having to suffer under corrupt governments, so many reactions. The more we violate the strict laws of God and nature, the more we suffer. Jesus commanded, thou shalt not kill. And this also applies to the animals. If we look further in the Bible, if we look at Isaiah 66, 3, we see that the killing of a man and the killing of an ox are equated. The laws of God are not like a restaurant menu where you take one from column A and two from column B. The laws of God are meant to be followed in their entirety. It's not that we take what we want and reject the rest because it doesn't suit our gratification. The law is the law, and there are reactions to breaking the law.
People are standing in lines to get into the grocery stores, cursing the government officials who they claim are bringing all this hardship upon them. But as soon as they get into the store, they're loading their carts with the butchered flesh of so many animals. People are not very intelligent or introspective in general. They're blaming others for their suffering but they hardly have the desire to take the education that will give them the opportunity to take accountability for their experiences in this lifetime and the next. It's very unfortunate. It's only a rare soul who is ready to enter into the most satisfying study of the absolute truth. Reactions to sinful activities may not be immediately apparent, but like the incubation period of a disease, they will manifest in time. There is reaction to sinful activity individually and societally. It doesn't matter whether or not one believes in the laws of God. There are laws and no one is exempt. If we commit sin individually or collectively, there is no one in the world who can stop the reaction to it. But the pure devotee of the Lord, either by his free will or at the request of the Lord himself, will come to this world to teach the suffering conditioned souls who are trapped in the repeated cycle of birth and death through so many species, how to exit this dismal realm and enjoy perpetually in the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, was one such pure devotee. He came to this world to, the, to give the education to suffering humanity in the form of of his example, his preaching, and his literary masterpieces. There is so much talk today of how the citizens need hope. Hope is an emotion of the future, always making plans that may or may not be in alignment with the will of the Lord, wishing for something beneficial to happen that may or may not be ordained. Hope means not being present with the way things really are and missing the opportunity to commune meaningfully with the will of the Lord in the moment. There was a great devotee who lived in the early 1800s. He wrote a poem called Sharagrahi Vaishnav. His name was Srila Bhakti Manod Thakur. And he was the father of my spiritual master's spiritual master. The poem was called Sharagrahi Vaishnav, and the 16th stanza reads as follows. Forget the past that sleeps, and never the future dream at all, but act in times that are with thee, and progress thee shall call. Real progress means the development of Krishna consciousness, the reawakening of our eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. The only hope for human civilization lies in taking to the process of Krishna consciousness. We can be Krishna conscious at every moment. Every moment is valuable and we can't buy back a moment for any amount of wealth. We don't need to be wasting our moments in playing solitaire or video games or engaging in other mindless activities. It's to our best benefit to use each moment wisely for what invites the reawakening of our natural and eternal position as loving and joyful servants 
of the Supreme Person. If the current painful and difficult situation of the world brings us back to seeking our natural position, our original nature of eternality, knowledge, and bliss, then it can be regarded as a blessing in disguise. If you are interested in the subject matter of this video and would like to learn more, please visit purelyprabhupada.com. Ancient Truths for the Upliftment of the Modern World.